announcements. We are using the uh, Slack page called the Electroweek VSM and Strong um, for this for communications. I uh, put the uh, a link to the sign up uh, sheet in the Slack channel and also a link to the slides, but apparently the link to the slides are not working. However, the slides, the slides are linked in the, in the page, so it should be working there, so I, but I will correct the link uh, in the uh, Slack channel as well. I also uh, want to mention that uh, we are working on a survey form, thanks to Ivan uh, Sidonik and uh, Xavier Bertu, Marta and Marcela. So hopefully we have this uh, form, survey form ready today and uh, I post that in Slack. So without further ado, I pass the uh, word to uh, our chair of today's sessions, uh, Hernan. Thank you. Okay, thanks uh, Rogerio and thanks uh, everybody for, for joining today. So today we will have the Electroweek Strong Interaction Flavor and Beyond Standard Model uh, Physics, a dedicated session. And so we will have the, the plenary presentation uh, from uh, Martin Mulders. Uh, so, Martin, if you want to start. Okay, thanks, Hernan. Um, I hope you can see my slides and that the sound is good. Um, yes, perfect. Yeah, okay, good. So, yeah, it, it's a pleasure to be here. Unfortunately, we cannot meet in person. But uh, the last few days, I must say the, the Zoom version of this workshop has been very interesting and I think it, it has gone very well. So let's hope to uh, continue on that good uh, path. So today um, we'll be talking about Electroweek, including Higgs and Flavor, strong and beyond the standard model interactions. Now. Clearly, if you put electroweak, Higgs flavor, and QCD together, what you get is the, basically the standard model of particle physics. And this amazing theory that describes everything we know uh, about fundamental particles and forces between them. Um, I, I won't say too much about it because Carlos gave this amazing talk already uh, on Monday. Um, and he also emphasized it's an impeccable theory based on um, a long history of theory and uh, many, many experiments. And so far we have not been able to really find a, a crack in the standard model. And the very nice thing is that um, also this understanding of the small scales uh, forms a consistent picture with the, the largest scales in the universe. And uh, we heard that uh, in the nice talk by Diana about uh, the standard model of cosmology. Uh, uh, yesterday, was it yesterday? I think, yes. So this is all very beautiful, um, but there are still some open questions that the standard model does not answer. And uh, you are all very well aware of the, the open questions. So there's uh, the standard model doesn't predict any particle masses. There's a question about why the Higgs is so light. The question of why we see matter around us, but not antimatter. You know, so there are some fundamental problems. Um, also, you heard about dark matter. We had a whole session dedicated to that, which is not explained by the standard model. And neutrinos are in the standard model, but as you have heard, there are still some interesting questions um, and there was a whole session about those. So how do we make progress from here? So this is always a, an interaction between theory and experiment. And one way to go and, and look for possible explanations beyond the standard model is to have theory predictions uh, or, or, or a fancy model predicting a new set of particles or a new force or symmetries that can explain some of these fundamental issues. Um, and then search for it with your experiment, either a dedicated small experiment or a, a large experiment that can look in a lot of different corners of phase space and see if 
this predicted particle exists or not. So that is one important way to look, but it can also go the other, other way around. So if, if we just look at the data and study in the best possible detail, the particles that we know are there and how they behave, there can still be some surprises. We may even find a new particle that was not predicted, or we may find new phenomena with particles uh, that, so that, that are not new fundamental particles, but that show new behavior that we didn't know. Um, and then of course you can try to push the energy to higher scales, uh, improve the precision to better than before to really look and look for small uh, deviations. And also um, with even more luminosity, look for rare processes, rare, rare production or decays that could also hide new physics uh, beyond the standard model. Okay, well, you're all very familiar with this, of course. So let, let's go on and uh, look at um, a list we try to make, a non-exhaustive, lists, of course, um, of some of the main priorities, the main drivers in the, the various areas. So in, in electron weak physics, um, well, most people agree that this new particle, the Higgs boson, the only known scalar particle, uh, is very special and mysterious. And that should be probably the highest priority of experimental research for now. and possibly uh, until the, uh, long in the future. Uh, but we might just as well also look at everything else in the standard model and measure it as precisely as possible, look for the rare processes and, um, and, and try to catalog how precisely the standard model agrees with measurements and, and put limits on deviations and something that has been very popular recently to develop further is this effective field theory framework that is a nice way to constrain the data and um, allow for reinterpretation in possible uh, new physics models. Flavor and CP violation is uh, also very interesting and maybe more mysterious in, in ways. So also there, there's an ambitious program of uh, measuring things in more detail um, discover possible symmetries or symmetry violations and um, also interesting place to look for new exotic states. And again, like electroweak observables in flavor, there are processes that can, uh, if measured with great precision, uh, can constrain higher energy physics. The strong interaction um, is also very peculiar with its uh, weird behavior uh, of asymptotic freedom or uh, confinement. So it, even though it has only one main strong constant, it, in that sense, it sounds like something very predictive, uh, but uh, in various regimes, it can be very challenging to actually make precise predictions to compare to measurements. Um, and also in uh, hadron, hadron collisions, um, an important ingredient there is to, to know the structure of the proton. And if you are colliding something else than protons, also possible nuclear modifications. And uh, so clearly there are other very exciting uh, regimes to study the strong interaction. So in extreme conditions, in relativistic heavy ion collisions, also similar effects that you might expect only in quark gluon plasma. Um, some of them also seem to show up in smaller systems. So that was very surprising. Uh, there are soft QCD models and hadronic showers that are not uh, easy to predict or, or impossible to predict from theory. So that's uh, also very challenging. And, and here there are links with cosmic ray physics. And uh, so also here, I didn't know where to put it either here or on the flavor physics. So these exotic bound states 
like tetra quarks and penta quarks that are showing up are, are very exciting. So these are some of the main scientific drivers in the standard model, I'd say. And then, so for beyond the standard model, I, I don't want to say much more because um, um, I already mentioned it. So you can search for new particles, new forces, and uh, maybe since we didn't observe anything new yet, uh, it's important to look for more weakly coupling effects. And um, yeah, so answer some of these key questions. So these are the main scientific drivers. They were also, um, of course, reflected in the, the European briefing book. And those main drivers are not necessarily different in the Latin American discussion here. Um, but what we would like, what we wanted to do is look at the, the white papers that we received and see how, man, how many of these general drivers are also considered in, in the Latin American uh, contributions. So we roughly had a, about 14 papers that are related to these topics and we organized in the next few slides in the three main topics um, what, what we found in, in, in the papers. And so in, on each slide, I have one table where you can see in the left column, uh, the, the particular topic of interest that is mentioned in the white paper. And then um, the corresponding uh, current infrastructure involvement where people want to do this research and, and or um, ideas for doing this at the future, uh, uh, future. Uh, detector or, or experiment. So you can see here electroweak Higgs and flavor physics, of course, uh, studying the Higgs boson or the top quark, uh, Higgs boson pair production, and uh, all, uh, a list of flavor topics. Um, and one reason we wanted to, uh, to make a table like this is that you can see, for example, that uh, two Two different groups, one in Colombia and one in Mexico, are working on the same topic. So when we are discussing possible local synergies, um, it might be interesting to, to explore if there is a, maybe there's a collaboration already going on, sorry if that's the case, or, or maybe uh, that would be interesting to look at in the future. So that's, uh, that was Electroweek and Flavor. And then the strong interactions, a similar table, uh, so here you can see involvement um, for heavy ion studies, uh, not only at Alice, but also Phoenix and STAR. Um, and then lower energy studies uh, are also done uh, in Brazil and Argentina at local facilities. Um, yeah, so... Um, so this is the, the strong interaction, then also beyond the standard model, again, a similar table. Here you can, you can see the, the various ex, uh, models that people are interested in to search, but also uh, um, more generally, just an overview of possible searches one can do in, in future facilities. And here you can see also uh, several uh, theory uh, topics that we will hear later uh, more about, I'm, I'm sure, in, in this session. At the bottom also, I, we included dark matter, um, and we heard yesterday that uh, you can look for this in collider physics, but also in dedicated dark matter experiments, in, in this case, June. But uh, so given that LHC showed up, uh, Oh, okay, this is a different way to categorize the involvements. So on the left, uh, the, the different experimental facilities, and you can see how um, the, the different countries in Latin America are connected to these efforts. And um, in some cases, countries are involved in, in many different experiments. Others are still maybe smaller and focusing on on a smaller subset. And but um, so for most of these experiments, there is an interest from multiple Latin American countries. So it is great to see this diversity and this involvement. And also in almost uh, well, in, in 
there was a very broad interest in, in future uh, facilities. And um, maybe it was to be expected that there's quite a lot of LHC uh, in here. So I want to spend a few slides on that. So here is a different uh, view um, showing the involvement of Latin American countries here in the, the four largest uh, experiments or detectors at the Large Hadron Collider. And uh, well, I, I know maybe you know that uh, this year is uh, special for very reasons, for, uh, for many reasons, uh, not only good reasons, but one milestone uh, is that uh, the LHC has been running uh, for 10 years and uh, uh, has been extremely successful, uh, so certainly uh, beyond the uh, expectation performance of, of all the, at, all, at every level. Um, maybe we didn't get the full energy of the LHC yet that was promised, but in every other respect, things have gone beyond expectations. And this has allowed a very diverse uh, and large output of scientific results. And uh, so we are close to 3000 LHC publications and a, a fraction of them, of course, is on the Higgs uh, and searches for beyond the standard model. Um, but more than half is focusing on this on standard model physics. And uh, I also wanted to highlight that during the COVID-19 lockdown, um, this, this physics output and production has gone on, maybe even accelerated a bit in, in all the experiments. And the uh, CMS even uh, submitted the 1000th paper. And here you see a breakdown again of the different topics. So it also includes uh, heavy iron physics, some cosmics, uh, very forward physics, B, B physics. So this is just to highlight the, the output and the diversity even in inside single experiments. And uh, so what did we learn in those 10 years? Um, I, I have a link here to an, a very nice article uh, written by uh, Michelangelo Mangano. And I, I think it's, it's definitely worth reading. Um, and uh, so of course we, we have learned that the Higgs boson exists uh, as mentioned nothing beyond the standard model yet so far. Um, but so there have been interesting surprises in, in many corners uh, showing the diversity of this kind of physics program. And as, as mentioned already, uh, a very good performance overall of all elements, including progress in, in theory um, that is also inspired by new observations and and um, precision measurements requiring more precise predictions. So overall, this has been a very successful uh, exercise. And um, here I wanted just to mention that we have been focusing uh, the discussion a bit on uh, physics uh, drivers and um, looking for a strong physics motivation that can uh, lead the, the direction in which you want to go. And the, the Higgs boson uh, has maybe has fooled us uh, a little bit because it has been uh, a more than ideal theory driver for 50 years between the prediction and final discovery, right? And it was used as motivation for several generations of experiments. Um, and now we have found it. And still we want uh, to understand the particle better. So it, it continues to be a motivation. But let's keep in mind that um, sometimes it can also be the other way around that uh, you look at the data and you see surprising things. Uh, especially in heavy ion physics, we have seen some surprises, uh, not only in ALICE, but also in, in ATLAS and uh, CMS. Um, so there was this, uh, a uh, beautiful effect of jet quenching where in this event, you can see that there is a high energy jet going in one direction and not in the other direction. And it's, it's spread out on the other side. And this was, it popped up immediately 
in the first heavy ion collision, it was, was really beautiful. And also in the very first data in CMS, we started seeing uh, some collective effects that were not expected and certainly not in proton-proton collisions. And this has led to a lot of studies later on, and also by, uh, by Alice and by Atlas. Okay, so, um, so for this data-driven process, we are in a good place because we have lots of data. And um, on the left, you can see some numbers. So we already have produced millions of Higgs bosons, hundreds of millions of top quarks, billions of uh, heavy bosons, and um, trillions of B quarks. Of course, there, um, the, eff the efficiency to reconstruct and trigger on them is, is much lower. But, um, and this is only 5%. So we are here in this uh, shutdown. And um, the next step will be run three with a duplication of the data. And then the high luminosity LHC, which is already, which is approved, as you know, and promises for the next, um, an interesting program for the next 15 to 20 years. So the, the first step in run three will already be very interesting. I won't go into much detail here, but um, so during the long shutdown, there are all kinds of technical uh, improvements in the detectors. And also the LHC is already trying out some 11 Tesla dipoles and an upgraded injector. Um, but most of all, uh, Alice and LHCB are, are really going to, uh, uh, to have major upgrades, which promise uh, much higher capability to record events and, and collect more data. Um, yeah, so then the high luminosity LHC uh, will be another important uh, uh, upgrade. Again, I, I don't want to say too much, but this is uh, an incredible challenge and um, it's inspiring all kinds of new ideas, um, both in computing, uh, also uh, was already mentioned in the Monday session, like uh, uh, machine learning in FPGAs for the level one trigger. So these are really new developments that can be very interesting. And um, so all detectors are looking for improvements in hermeticity, so extended forward coverage, uh, improved granularity. And what I find personally very exciting is uh, um, the Atlas, CMS, and LHCB, I, maybe Alice, I don't know, are looking at ways to add a new dimension to the data that is taken by trying to get as much timing information um, that will help to know from which uh, vertex an individual particle uh, came. So that's all to, to battle the increased pileup. Okay, so that, that's enough about physics uh, prospects. I, I want now to uh, have some general slides uh, talking about um, topics that could be interesting for further discussion. Uh, first of all, uh, so, what about these global collaborations? So um, here you see CMS Atlas and, uh, and Alice, and they all show that it, these are global, including Latin America. And we're looking at dozens of countries, hundreds of institutes, thousands of physicists. Um, so one question that came up is, can you, how big of an investment do you need to be visible in these large, uh, experiments and um, I, I wanted to highlight with a few examples and we invite you to send us more um, that it, it is possible to be really a, an important player and one example is the CMS group at, uh, in, in Rio which is a leading player in all aspects of this uh, uh, proton precision spectro spectrometer that really adds unique additional capability to the CMS uh, physics program. And so and they are definitely recognized uh, for that. Another example is uh, this addition of cosmic ray capability to ALICE, which is a Latin American speciality, I would say, which is a beautiful example of some something additional that's very visible. Um, also, 
uh, in, in CMS. Um, there is this beautiful analysis of uh, B sub C, uh, excited states. And I, if I'm not mistaken, this was one of the first CMS analyses, or maybe the first to look at the whole data set of run two. So it was very highly visible and advertised inside CMS, at least. And also there were seminars, and it's just a beautiful result. Also highlighting a good resolution of CMS, not as good as LACB, but it's very nice. Um, similarly, Argentina, I, I know from the Atlas management, is uh, playing a very important role in the, the trigger. Um, I heard a rumor that a Brazilian group was involved in this uh, light by light scattering that led to a nature physics article. I'm not sure if I've if that's true, but please correct us or and give us more examples. And of course, uh, theoretical contributions from Latin America have for a long time been, been world leading. So um, another point, uh, the question, uh, how can we improve our impact or, or you and, uh, with uh, regional collaboration and thinking a bit about that I was thinking that it actually goes both ways, maybe. So um, for sure, working together locally at national or in the, in the region and Latin American region can increase your impact. But also the other way around, if you join this global collaboration, um, you have a framework also to, to start working together, especially if you work on similar technology or similar physics topics inside that global collaboration. So I, I think um, it, so the regional uh, collaboration increases impact in the global uh, uh, landscape and, and vice versa. And there are different um, dimensions in which you can work together, either on technology or physics topics, or um, a nice example, uh, is the white paper that we will hear, hear today uh, that the future facility uh, interest brought together uh, young Brazilian scientists from very different parts of the country uh, to talk about that. And this is maybe interesting because it has a longer time scale. So there's also more time to develop such kind of uh, collaboration um, over the years. And then I will come back to educational programs, which I think is also a beautiful way to bring together Latin American countries. Okay, um, of course, as mentioned, uh, particle physics um, puts unprecedented technical challenges, which leads to uh, innovation and technology. Um, so by joining this kind of efforts, um, you get access or are encouraged to uh, develop this expertise locally. You, you uh, get a connection with world leading experts um, and opportunities for, for training as well. Right? And this is also true for computing. And this was already discussed on Monday. Um, and of course, uh, the importance of stressing that this is also in the long run and uh, a capacity builder and helps uh, economic growth. Uh, and I mean, the large collaborations are very much aware of this and encourage that uh, this kind of uh, building things in, in the Latin American countries uh, as one of the conditions basically to make a, a useful collaboration. And this was also uh, already discussed yesterday. So let me go to the next slide, which is on education. So maybe even more important than economy is education, education, education. So uh, we had, we see several white papers that are stressing this, so these international networks. Um, and I want to say here that uh, being part of a large scale running experiment really provides a lot of on the job training opportunities. Uh, but also uh, the, the new discoveries or hopefully exciting results will give inspiration right, uh, for, um, for the education programs. Um, also, you immediately get access to a larger network of scientists that can be teachers that you can 
call uh, on. And um, also these large collaborations have some uh, help for you in outreach programs. So these are all side benefits that are very important. And um, okay, this is one of my personal uh, uh, involvements in the CERN Latin American schools of uh, high energy physics. Uh, as an example of uh, uh, some ways that large collaborations can, can give back to the local area and stimulate the development and training of, of young scientists. Um, and then almost at the end, uh, I um, just wanted to mention that there are trends that will be, hopefully uh, that, that will also be beneficial for participation from rom remote regions in general. Um, and so also in Latin America. So there is this open science, uh, so open, uh, open access publishing, uh, more and more open data from the experiments. Also, um, one challenge in large collaboration is recognition of the contributions of young scientists. And this is also more and more something that is on the agenda and trying to um, trying to improve that, uh, not just experiment by experiment, but in, in a more general uh, discussion. And um, then of course, yeah, so the particle physics has played a role in history. Uh, I think also in Latin America, even um, uh, internet infrastructure. And then of course, there's the World Wide Web, uh, the computing grid, uh, Indigo, which that didn't make it yet to Sao Paulo, but it will, it's one of the, the ways that um, teleworking is possible and a meeting like this is possible. And COVID-19, uh, although it's a terrible issue, has accelerated this trend. And um, maybe this will change a bit the, the way meetings are organized and reduce the need for travel. And um, yeah, so I was just thinking that this might be beneficial uh, in the in the future. And then um, just one slide uh, about the future. Uh, again, focusing on collider facilities. Um, we heard an, a nice talk by uh, Salvatore um, about the outcome of the European strategy. So I, I will not say too much about that. And clearly, um, these are very long time scale projects. Uh, there are some projects that I think are already approved, uh, like the electron ion collider in the, in the US. Uh, NICA is a, also an ion collider uh, that is being built in, 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 in Dubna in Russia. And then there's this whole question about what should be the next uh, large uh, high end, higher energy uh, collider. Uh, well, so you, you heard already this discussion and um, it's important that this outcome of the European strategy is fairly recent, so we may need some time to look at it more in more detail, but uh, um, it's for sure that these future large scale projects are going to be more global and uh, there will be more and more uh, need and opportunity for Latin America to, uh, to be involved in this. And uh, so certainly CERN and Europe in the next five to seven years will be looking for this kind of possible collaboration um, in order to see if big plans for a 100 TV collider are technically and financially feasible. So that brings me to my summary slide. Um, I won't go through everything again because we are running out of time. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate again that uh, so you have seen that uh, uh, there's really a, a wide and diverse and successful uh, well-established involvement of various Latin American countries in the LHC experiments. Um, so exploring the topics that we were talking about today. 
and um, we we also know that there is involvement in in Bell too, for example, and experiments at RIC, and the nuclear science experiments that are happening at facilities in Argentina and Brazil, and we will hear more about that today. Um, I just wanted to mention that it's pretty clear that. Uh, you know, although we, we thank everybody who submitted white papers, it, it's clear that uh, they don't give the complete picture of activities in Latin America, and there's more going on. Uh, still, for the, the first time that you're doing this uh, strategy discussion, uh, I think it has been very successful. But uh, hopefully, I mean, even for this round, we would still like to uh, find a way to, to get more inputs to make a more complete picture if possible. But uh, yeah, let's save that for the discussion, I guess. So I will stop here. I hope you can still hear me. <clears throat> yes, um, okay. Uh, thanks, Martin, for this uh, beautiful and very complete uh, your presentation. Uh, so we will come back uh, to question and discussion uh, at the end. I think uh, you have some slides. So just be before, just uh, let me highlight that, as you mentioned in one bullet, I mean, this, uh, this forum is uh, one of the goals is to build uh, and make uh, the link uh, stronger between the community. And in that sense, I think the, the CERN Latin America School uh, was helping a lot to build links within young scientists uh, at the early stage of their career, so this is quite important in this context. Uh, okay, so thanks. So we will move then to, to the 10 minute presentation. So I, I, I will, um, let's say, call the attention to the speakers when nine minutes passed, as I think was doing Marcela at the beginning. So we will move then to the presentation of uh, Quartidon Plasma with uh, Alice, uh, Marcelo Munoz. Hello. You want to... Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. So should I share my, my slides? No, no, Martin is sharing for, for you, for, okay. for all okay. the speakers. I see. Okay, so can I start? Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Okay, great. So first of all, let me thank uh, the organizers for the opportunity to speak in, in this uh, nice meeting. So I'll be representing these four groups from Brazil, USP, Unicamp, UFABC, and uh, Rio Grande do Sul. Uh, and uh, in our white paper proposal for uh, studying the quagmon plasma dialysis experiment. So the next. So um, uh, next slide, please. Yes. So I won't uh, give too much details, but the broad idea of studying the, the, the so-called quagmon plasma is actually embedded in this broader study of the, the phase uh, diagram of the nuclear matter where the, the, the quagmon plasma is one of the phases when you go to high temperature or high density in this uh, phase diagram. Here I, I just included one definition, it's a very broad definition, but one definition of the quagmon plasma that is, is a state where quarks and gluons are deconfined from hadrons, so the, the degree of freedom is um, color in a, in a very large volume in, in a, nucleus volume rather than a nucleonic. And, and also we have this more recent, uh, very nice, uh, let's say, statement from, from this uh, paper where it says it's the simplest form of complex matter that we know of, most uh, uh, directly connected to the fundamental laws that govern all matter in the universe. So this is a very important, very nice study regarding QCD, as, as Martin was presenting. And, and how can we do that? So next slide. Um, we, we do that with relativistic heavy ion collisions. And in this white paper, more precisely, we, use the, we propose to use the data from the ALICE experiment. So the idea is to extract, extract the, the properties of the, of the plasma uh, through the understanding of the dynamics of these collisions. And in our proposal, we include two major uh, ways, let's say, of uh, studying this very complex system that is a uh, heavy ion collision, mainly the, the strangeness um, studies that is more related to bulk properties of the plasma, 
and the hard probes that allows us a kind of tomography of the QGP. So next. Um, well, so here's just the, the, the objectives. I, I tried to follow the, the structure of the white paper. So we are, what we are proposing is physics analysis and development of instrumentation, and also, of course, the training of future generative scientists. And these are the, the universities involved. Next, please. So regarding the strangeness studies, so strangeness enhancement is, is, is one of the original signatures of the plasma proposed in the 80s. It's very special because of the mass of the strange quark very close to the critical temperature of the phase transition. And uh, this plot is from a nature um, uh, paper that was published by Alice and where the, the main drivers of this uh, analysis was uh, the, the, the group from Unicamp. And where it's shown that uh, we can see this effect of enhancement also in high multiplicity PP collisions. This is a, a novel effect and it, it opens many questions that models cannot answer so far. So it's a very interesting study and we of course need more data, more statistics, more differential measurements to keep uh, studying this. Next. Uh, in the other side we have these hard probes. So the idea is to have to, to get these um, products of hard scattering inside the median to study it, the property of, of the medium through energy laws. So here also the idea is to go more differential, look for instance for jets uh, generated by heavy quarks specifically, and for that also we need more data, we need more uh, statistics. Next. So, so this uh, um, need for more, more uh, differential measurements, more statistics drives the, the, the upgrade of the ALICE experiment that these groups in, uh, were involved. So uh, the groups from Sao Paulo were involved in this, in the, the upgrade of the time projection chamber of the, of the ALICE. The idea here is to increase the, the rate of uh, data taking of this detector. So the, the multi-wire chamber was uh, exchanged by a, a gas electron multiplier readout idea then you have you can you can um, make the back ion backflow uh, lower and then you can increase the rate of um, of data taking and our particular contribution so this is uh, one example um, was in the electronics of this new readout of the TPC so we uh, in Sao Paulo we project uh, we developed this new ASIC for the, the, the electronics of the TPC called SAMPA, and then this is the nickname of, the, of Sao Paulo, so that's just to really <laughs> put the impression. And, and so it was developed for the, the ALICE upgrade that it's now, now being placed in the, in the detector. Next, please. Uh, another very important upgrade from the ALICE experiment for one three, where the group from Rio Grande do Sul is, is involved, is the Moon Forward Tracker. So this is uh, also a very nice detector with very high technological silicon sensors, uh, monolithic uh, silicon sensors. The idea is to improve the, the, the capability of the detector to measure the vertex of the particles in the forward region. The group in Hugo Sul was involved in all the mechanical structure of this detector. And, and it will allow so for us to, to keep studying heavy quarks and uh, jets quenching in the, in the forward uh, region, and also um, some studies with the quarkonia uh, through the, the, the suppression and combination in the, the confined region. So next, please. Um, this uh, white paper actually was a very nice uh, opportunity for the four groups to get together and propose uh, a common uh, contribution to, to instrumentation, and that is is uh, is the focal that came about in the in the for the focal uh, upgrade. This is the forward calorimeter for the run four in Alice. So it's an electromagnetic and a hadronic calorimeter placed very forward in this 3.4 to 5.8 uh, pseudo rapidity region, and the idea is to 
study nuclear modification of the gluon density at small x and also to explore further um, jet quenching effects in forward rapidity. Our contribution, our aim contribution is on the uh, electronics of the low granulate layers of the electron electromagnetic uh, part of Foucault. So this, this uh, the electromagnetic part of the Foucault is uh, made of tungsten and silicon sensors. Uh, very high granularity, there are some very high, high granularity layers and low, lower granularity layers. And so the idea is we combine, let's say, our previous experience with electronics and silicon sensors to contribute in this part of uh, this uh, new upgrade of ALICE for RAM4. So this is very nice as a, as a common project of our Brazilian groups uh, in instrumentation in ALICE. Next, please. So the timeline, of course, is driven by the LHC uh, schedule. So the, this first two contributions that I mentioned, the sample chip and the muon forward tracker is already being installed for in, in during this uh, long shutdown too. The idea is that they will allow the, the, the data taking for uh, during run three, when we'll do the, the data analysis allowed by these detectors, high statistics uh, allowed by these detectors. And uh, during this time, we will also work on the, the Focal upgrade, our contribution to the Focal upgrade that is foreseen to be installed during the long, long shutdown three in 2025, uh, 26. Next. So just, uh, I, I was including the white paper in terms of construction and operation. Sorry, I'm nine minute past. Okay, I'm, I'm almost done. Uh, so the, of course, as all LHC experiments, we have this maintenance and operation fees in terms of people working. We are in 10 scientists paying around 8,000 uh, Swiss francs and also MNOB that is direct to detectors. And this is our contribution. Uh, we also need some, we have some costs in terms of uh, uh, the TPC aging studies. And of course, for the Foucault Electronics, who also are planning to contribute with half of it with the Grenoble group, group totaling uh, around 250,000 Swiss francs. Next. For the computing, this is a very basic important requirement to participate in the LHC experiments. We have a clusters, cluster of computers in Sao Paulo. So far, we are up to date to our contribution should be around 2%, but of course we need uh, to grow because of the, the, the crazy data rates. So we will need more uh, resources for, for this, this growing of, of the computing power. Next. So just to finalize, um, so I think this white paper was a very nice opportunity to bring all the Brazilian groups together, all the, the Alice Brazilian groups together in, in a common uh, project. Uh, there are very, several overlapping physics interests within the groups that will be very beneficial. We identify this common instrumentation project for the groups, the FOCAL, and it was very nice to open so the possibility for the collaboration within the groups. And of course, uh, new collaborations with other Latin American groups are very welcome, and we hope this uh, triggers that. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, uh, Marcelo, for a nice presentation. And yeah, I think it's also important to highlight that uh, uh, yeah, this forum also helped it to bring local communities, not only digital communities together, but local communities of European world. So I think it's important. So thanks, and okay, we will keep the question for at the end of the session. So remember that you can put the question on Slack also if you want for, for the speakers. So we move now to Nicolas Garnal of the Colombian Network in High Energy Physics. So, Nicolas. Okay, thank you. Can you guys hear me? Yes, perfect. Excellent. Okay, so as you say, I'm Nicolas Bernal from Universidad Antonio Nariño in Bogota, Colombia. And I'm talking on behalf of the CONHEP, so it's the Colombian Network on High Energy Physics. Uh, Carlos Sandoval already presented the network um, on Tuesday, I think. So just a couple of words, it's a very, very new network. It has like two years, maybe three, three years old. And we created the necessity of bringing together the Colombian community on 
on high energy physics because we can recognize the the need of working together as uh, as a as a community right so if you please right uh-huh so um yes so carlos uh, discussed about the like if you want the experimental chapter we'll talk about the the theory chapter of this uh network so we're distributed basically all around Colombia. So, uh, there are some people working in Cartagena, Barranquilla, Tunja, Pasto, and uh, Bucaramanga. So here you can see uh, the list of the two groups contributing to this um, white paper. One thing is that after the discussion we had yesterday, in particular what Mar Marcela said, I'm not sure that the white paper we wrote was exactly what was required. But anyway, we're happy to improve it if we have a couple of, of, of updates, right? So next, please. So this was white paper was divided basically in three sections. So where we show the main uh, physics drivers. So the first is uh, dark matter and dark sector. And here uh, we are mainly focused on, on phenomenology and on model building in particular uh, the dark matter production in the early universe uh, and also be, uh, like, the usual and boring wind uh, dark matter but also uh, the production mechanism beyond wind in particular fins, fins, eyes, any, any mechanism you, you can imagine right but we are also working as a community in the dark matter production uh, at colliders in particular uh, uh, CMS and, and Atlas and not only dark matter, but also general dark sectors, right? So also uh, are very interested in the, in the physics that uh, can be uh, reached by, by June, right? And also, yes, in general supersymmetry or, or as they call it, general dark sectors, neutron physics, uh, neutrino physics, sorry. And, and also dark, all the physics related to dark matter, right? So for instance, the relation between neutrinos or in particular, uh, in, in relation with the uh, with inflation, so there are couple, also a couple of groups, in particular here in Bogota and in Medellin, working in body simulations and working the astro, uh, astro and cosmo props of, of dark matter. One thing I want to point out is that there, the big absence here, at least in Colombia, is the dark matter direct and indirect detection. There is basically no group, not a single person working on this kind of experiment. So that's a big issue that has to be solved. And um, yes, we're also working based on the phenomenology of, of neutrino and the uh, phenomenology of DSM physics at LHC. So next, please. So the second chapter discussing the white paper was related to cosmology. And here again, the main focus is the, uh, in its theory and model building. So, so there are very, several aspects related to inflation, reheating, and particular modified cosmologies, non thermal histories, and, and dark energy, for instance, this Proca, horn density theories, or even beyond horn density theories, and how to probe the early universe, for instance, with primordial gravitational waves, large scale structures. And, and again, here there's a, a, from the experimental front, there's a thing, only one group working on the experimental part of the cosmology. And in particular, and in addition, there's a single person working on, on the DESI experiment, right? That's, that's, that's the only thing that we have to, to, to show from the cosmology experimental part. The okay, next slide. This was the, the last uh, chapter discussed in the white paper, correspond basically to the flavor, flavor theory. And here there's uh, also a big, um, big effort by the community working on uh, diverse extensions of the uh, standard model for tackling these flavor, flavor problems, in particular adding these trees and global symmetry. Um, um, right, so yes. So here you can see where they were changing the current, so the physics and production and spectroscopy of heavy flavors, in particular at CMS. And next slide, please. 
So as a community, we're organizing a series of annual events. So the major one of this uh, conference corresponds to the ComHEP. So ComHEP with N is the Colombian Network of High Energy Physics. And the ComHEP with N is the Colombian Meeting of High Energy Physics. We, we, uh, we are, this year will take place well, as a virtual event, the fifth edition of this event. So you guys are super welcome to, to join. So, but we are having also one event devoted to cosmology is the COCO, the Cosmology in Colombia. This year we have the second edition and the MOCA also is dark matter in Colombia, very Oscura in Colombia. We'll have the, the uh, fourth version this year. The three will be uh, a completely virtual event because of the, of the, of the COVID. So with this series of events, the idea again is to gather together the community to strengthen the, the, the community, right? And I think uh, even if this network is super early, uh, super young, as it's always like two or three years old, I think there's the community is steadily growing in the say in the last decade or, or so. So a big community effort is still needed. And yes, one other, I think the last point I want to, to emphasize that there's a really few people engaged in the dark matter and cosmo uh, part, experimental, experimental part. And I think that's, that's, that's something that has to be solved as a, as a community. And I think that that was basically all that I want to tell you guys. So I think I have a last slide. The most important one, yes, exactly. So thank you very much. Okay, thank Nicolas for, for the presentation. I think we could start to think about the kindergarten school for physics in Latin America. <laughs> like our ready candidate. Um, okay, so uh, thanks, and then uh, we keep the, the question and discussion for, for the end. So we move forward then to uh, Murilo Rangel, that's going to talk about physics at the LHCD. So, hello. hello. Yes. Hello everyone, good, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, so uh, I, I am going to talk briefly about uh, what, are, what are the plans for uh, the, 15, the next 15 years uh, of physics exploration with the LHCB experiment by the Brazilian group. So here I listed the interest scientists in this, uh, in this community. Um, and uh, most of them are uh, in Brazil, as you can see. We have, uh, um, <clears throat> and uh, if we go to the next slide. So, uh, well, uh, since I, I was asked to, to produce five slides, I, I mean, there is, you know, I, it's going to be very quickly, but uh, what's driven, what's driving us is uh, this uh, schedule, you can see in the slides. Um, many uh, of the scientists in the group are actually uh, working um, in LHCB experiments since the, the beginning, since the, the, the proposal. And then um, some of us uh, joined afterwards. And uh, there are a lot of, uh, uh, there is a long list of uh, contributions we had, we have done, uh, the, the, the group has done to, to the experiments. I'm not going to do a report here, uh, but, uh, uh, and basically uh, the, 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 what, uh, what we are doing, what the, the LHB, and I, and I feel that, uh, well, that's not only in this forum, but I think most of the, uh, in some of the conference, I feel that uh, sometimes LHB is, uh, uh, it's, uh, People don't remember that we also uh, we also do uh, well, uh, space of physics and other also general purpose physics. Uh, and uh, right now we're analyzing um, the run through data, and uh, we are working on the what's going to be the major upgrade that uh, we call upgrade one. And uh, uh, in the long, long shutdown three, we are going to have the upgrade one B. Which is not uh, the which is not a major upgrade, so that's the different the difference between uh, CMS and Atlas. And then we uh, we are we are going to take data 
in this uh, round uh, four. Uh, so there is a upgrade two that uh, I'm not in including in this uh, slide for discussion, uh, but we are of course uh, uh, discussing if we are going to, to, to contribute for that or, or not. But this is for after 15 years, so I'm not uh, going to, to go to that. So that's uh, you see on the la on the right the, the 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 integrated luminosity rate tax to have, which you of course it's lower than uh, the the atlas and CMS, and then that's why I have the next slide. So basically, here it's to explain why uh, we are why we uh, uh, choose to 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 study. Uh, collisions with the, the LHD detector. So first of all, uh, of course, you may probably most of most of you know that the figure on the right is the the BB bar cross-section uh, distribution with respect of the uh, uh, bottom quark angles, and then you see that the the, the cross-section is uh, decreasing uh, with the angle. So most of the B bar big pairs are, are produced in the forward region. Therefore, the, 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 that's a good place to put your detector to study uh, high flavor uh, physics. So CP violation, uh, and uh, not only in the, in the B, also in the charge detector, uh, and, and the red decay. Uh, within this, uh, within this uh, dedicated high flavor physics, uh, there are indirect stuffs for unknown physics, which is uh, of course very interest, interesting. And also, uh, as a reminder, we, uh, as, a, as was also a surprise, and then uh, the Brazilian group participates a lot in this, uh, uh, in this uh, new, new, new uh, use of the, the, of the LHD detector. We are also doing this general purpose physics, which is actually Complementary to to Atlas and CMS and analysis, uh, we shouldn't forget that we also uh, collect uh, heavy ion uh, data, and that, that's also one of the an, an, uh, one of the, the data we work on within the Brazilian group. So at the end, what we have is a general purpose detection in the fourth region. If you look at uh, at this uh, figure comparing Atlas, Atlas. CMS and LHD, you see that uh, uh, the, all the, 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 the sub detectors you have in a general purpose uh, detector, you have LHD in a complementary region. So that's what makes uh, LHD uh, interesting. And a wire to great, uh, of course, there are hints, uh, uh, there are some, some measurements that are not. That are, there, there, is, there, are, there are tensions between measurement and, and uh, standard model prediction uh, concerning the lepton flavor universality and uh, angular analysis. So this is must be uh, these studies must must be carried up, carried on. Uh, precision tasks with a uh, rare decays also very interesting to to probe uh, on physics. And there are several complementary studies that uh, can be done uh, with respect to, to general purpose detectors. And, uh, and of course, with the run three and run four, we have we are we are going to collect more more data. And uh, I didn't mention, uh, but the LHD is uh, running with a uh, low instantaneous luminosity. There is a leveling of the beam in the LHD uh, crossing. Uh, but uh, in the run uh, three and four, the, the we are going to collect with higher instantaneous uh, luminosity. So we, are, of course, are going to have more data, and uh, we also are going to uh, we are working on more efficient triggers, very low thresholds, so going to very low momentum uh, physics. So as a final slide, I think that's. One of the points, as far as I understood, that's one of the points of this forum. Uh, so it's not a re I not presenting here a report of the uh, of a big list 
of the successful uh, contributions we have done for, for the experiment. I could mention very quickly then, uh, for instance, we, well, since the beginning of many contributions were done, and then uh, recently uh, we worked on the uh, vertex locator detector that uh, it's a detector closer to the, to the beam. Uh, and then uh, it's uh, 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 the, the detector that uh, uh, uses it for, for the uh, vertex for the secondary process identification. Uh, we also worked on the on the uh, uh, sci-fi uh, project and uh, basically we worked on this uh, on the hardware and firmware. Uh, we are also involved on the uh, what we call real-time analysis and uh, this is uh, mainly the, the trigger and to make sure that the trigger is going to, to, to be uh, efficient and, and also actually that's a very interesting talk because since we are we're using now for one uh, fee DQs, and uh, that's uh, the first uh, experiment that using globally, you know, in the in, in the full trigger, uh, this uh, uh, graphical uh, bar for, for 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 the trigger, and also uh, we are working on several analyses uh, on the uh, charm decay, P decay in three bodies. Uh, PC to three bodies and QCD and left week and uh, actually light by light as well in lead to lead uh, collision. Uh, but uh, to do that, and there are several chains, uh, several, several challenges. And uh, most of the challenges we, we face uh, are the, the cost. And uh, this is, well, this is what I, I think will be one of the uh, Nice uh, outcome of this uh, forum is to to come with come up with uh, good ideas how to formalize commi commitments to LHC experiments and uh, and uh, to to build uh, in a long term uh, infrastructure so that we properly train our students. We do that, but uh, we can do better. Uh, and also, it's, uh, I, I understand that this point of being. Um, uh, uh, the COVID provided this, uh, well, uh, uh, being re uh, do, do remote remote work is uh, possible, and we've been doing that uh, forever. But uh, it it's doesn't uh, uh, replace uh, the missions, the mission trips to CERN, and uh, this is uh, one of the points. So at the end, uh, in fifteen years, there is a big cost we have to to. I mean, if we have this money, we know how to, we know to, we know what to do with that. Uh, and I, I hope that uh, at the end we can discuss uh, uh, joint uh, solutions for for this uh, issue. Thank you. Okay, thanks for the this nice summary and focus highlighted presentation. Thank you much. Uh, so we will move forward then. Uh, for the next presentation, which is an uh, experimental uh, contribution on high energy physics from Argentina, with Fernando Monticelli. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Should I start? Yeah, wait, uh, that Martin. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes. great, thanks. So uh, I'm going to present on behalf of the Argentinian high energy physics groups, uh, La Plata and Buenos Aires, and uh, the uh, experimental app have input to the white paper. If you go to slide number two, you have a screenshot of the white paper we have presented on behalf of, uh, of, all of, our, of all of us. And this is going to be uh, in the framework of the high luminosity LHC, which I'm going to tell you about a little bit on slide number three. So the high luminosity LHC is an upgrade of the current LHC and is going to be uh, start uh, working around 2026. And the upgrade will happen around 2024 up to 2026. Uh, you're going to have 10 times more in the total luminosity than, uh, than the LHC. And it, to achieve that in the same amount of time, the instantaneous luminosity will be uh, way higher than the current LHC. Uh, so on slide number four, I'm having only 10 minutes, so let's move. Uh, so why such an accelerator? Well, the thing is that um, 
the idea is that to achieve uh, a Higgs factory with the high luminosity density, you have here the numbers, uh, how many Higgs you would be produced on a different uh, accelerators. And then uh, with this machine and with a 300, uh, 3000 inverse uh, femtobarn of uh, total data, we would, be, uh, we would be able to achieve uh, measurements for Higgs self-couplings, for example. We have here some, some examples, which uh, will allow us in principle also to check and, uh, and, and, and test the trilineal self-coupling of, uh, of, the, of the Higgs. And also uh, look for um, you know some uh, different searches, some di Higgs uh, production on different channels. Also, it will allow us to uh, measure uh, rare decays of the, of the Higgs boson that is not, uh, um, let's say, in the reach of the current uh, high, uh, in, on the current LHC, like Higgs to JXI, gamma, and Higgs to mu mu. And of course, uh, search for things beyond standard model like uh, S stop or S stop production or C prime uh, interactions. The new let's say new physics beyond standard model. Uh, on slide number five, uh, this implies uh, challenges for the current detector, which is going to be upgraded. Uh, so let's say so if, we, if we go up almost an order of magnitude instantaneous luminosity up to a range of five to seven tenths, ti 10 times to the 34 per centimeter square per, se uh, per second, it will mean uh, a total number of interactions per bunch crossing of around 200, which is way too much. It's a lot, much more than currently. You have a screen shot there of a uh, an, uh, simulated event on how you would see such an event on the high luminosity LHC in the Atlas detector with a new inner detector. So uh, the thing is that the idea would be that the detector can achieve the same performance as currently in LHC. And for that, there are few things that are going to be replaced. So the calorimeters will stay, but the inner detector completely will going to be replaced by a new, uh, by a complete new detector. Um, so the idea is that um, many of the upgrades means that there will be uh, replacements that achieve, uh, you know, the detector to be robust against this huge amount of extra radiation, which means new electronics. Also, we need to be able to deal with a very high, you know, number of, of, of instantaneous events, so the pileup, which is increasing, increasing an order of magnitude here, and we need to deal with that. And also the idea is that the trigger system and data acquisition can keep up triggering on events with the same thresholds uh, or let's say low thresholds we have now. So this is all a set of challenges that uh, are very, um, let's say, um, it means a lot of work and, and a lot of important things and changes that's going to happen uh, in, the, in the upgrade of the detector. Uh, so in slide number six, there is a full list of physics motivations that have been studied in detail in the TDR. I'm not going, of course, through, through all of them because this, it means uh, each of them may require an additional talk. But you can see there the physics uh, reach on the physics program of the high luminosity LHC or, uh, or the Atlas detector under the high luminosity LHC is very rich. and um, and it has been studied in detail, and is this what motivates uh, the upgrade of the detector and also the upgrade of the trigger system and the data acquisition system. If you move to slide number seven, uh, again, this is uh, uh, the, the diagram that, that tells you how the hardware part of the trigger is going to be upgraded in the high luminosity LHC. Uh, stage. Um, this is a complex system, which I'm not going to go through the details, uh, but basically every box means a, a specific piece of hardware and you have to see how the data flow goes in order to, to make the trigger system to be able to online, so on the fly, be able to identify useful events in this very harsh environment of 200 collisions per bunch crossing and still keep up high efficiency uh, low thresholds, of, uh, you know, efficiency of, of, of physics, like let's say uh, order of 25 GB electrons and stuff, and still be able to have a, a rate reduction so we don't, so we can store all the data and useful data in our storage so we can be analyzed afterwards. And uh, the thing is that the uh, white paper proposal from the Argentinian institutions is, is uh, aimed 
to this uh, hardware uh, trigger system. So if you go to slide number eight, this is the involvement of Argentinian institutions in the hardware for Atlas, which is in the context of the global trigger, which is one of the pieces I showed in the previous slide, which is a very complex system, which is implemented in hardware and runs algorithms in hardware, which currently are run in the high luminosity, in the high level trigger, which is implemented in software. Basically, this new global trigger system has three main components, which is a multiplexer, an event processor, and a demultiplexer. And the three pieces of hardware are basically the same hardware based on FPGAs, while the firmware specifies the function of each of these pieces. And of course, this will imply, uh, you know, uh, transceivers and links, uh, optical links with several uh, gigabits per second to uh, be able to manage all the data flow that is needed for this hardware. So we signed an MOU, uh, which means that uh, Argentinian groups will contribute to the design of some or various of the global trigger modules. 23% uh, of the modules will be produced in Argentina in the local industry. Uh, also, it's included in the MOU that uh, we are going to uh, test modules or a fraction of the modules in, in our institutions using uh, a demonstration board that's going to that's being built in Germany. We also uh, um, sign that we are going to be uh, responsible of some software and firmware developments for this system and we are responsible of the design of a piece of the hardware that is the rear transition modules from which 90 percent of them is going to be built in the local industry too. On slide number nine, just a screenshot of the MOU that has been signed uh, basically by CERN and by Argentinian back then uh, uh, Science and Technology Secretary, and it was in July 2019. And then to finalize on slide number 10, uh, so we want to say that uh, about the facilities we are building up, which is uh, we were building a, an equipment a lab uh, of electronics lab in our institution that is being equipped and is located in the new building that was uh, started to function uh, a year ago or so. And the idea is to have everything that we need to achieve this uh, collaboration uh, with the hardware, uh, with the Atlas for the, uh, for the high luminosity LHC upgrade. So we have some, some stuff already. We have an ATCA shelf for where the boards are going to be used and actually the same kind of shelves that are installed or will be installed in the, uh, in the let's say in the Atlas detector for this uh, piece of hardware. We have FPGA kits, we have a very high performance computer for building firmware and doing the simulation and stuff of, of this firmware and some equipments like uh, very fast arbitrary signal generators, uh, os oscilloscopes, uh, soldering stations for uh, SMDs and stuff. And well, uh, we're still need to acquire some other items, of course, with the current uh, situation is still difficult, but anyway. Also, uh, so we have an engineer that just uh, effectively joined uh, our troop, but he has been uh, trained at CERN for several months until uh, just before the quarantine. And all this know-how was built on top of uh, phase one up, uh, project upgrades that's going on right now on, on CERN. And this is a key, a key piece of uh, knowledge that will be useful for us for uh, you know uh, building firmware and hardware for FPGAs for the for the phase two project for the global as we are going to to do in Argentina. Uh, so anyway, this kind of facility allows us not just to to collaborate but also to develop hardware in general, speci specifically for trigger and data acquisition for us. Uh, I mean for Atlas and uh, but anyway is expertise in processing data in uh, on online with very high speed for uh, experiments hosted in Latin America. Uh, also, uh, the know-how and the collaboration we're building along with infrastructure is something we need to develop hardware in Argentina and well in Latin America in general for HEP experiments in general. And also it will allow us to interact with the industry and you know make a synergy of development and uh, research not just for us, but also for the local industry. Um, and that's all from our side. I think I made it in time. Yes, perfect in time. So thank you, Nando, for this very clear presentation. Uh,
so uh, we then uh, move forward and keep the, the question and discussion for, for the end. Uh, so we will have now the presentation of Tiago Tomei about the Brazilian presentation in the next generation uh, collider. Spanish. Tiago? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, thanks. So hello everybody, my name is Tiago Tomei. I am a researcher at the Sao Paulo Research Analysis Group uh, in UNESP. And I um, work at the CMS experiment at CERN. And I do not speak for all of the community, but I'm speaking particularly right now on behalf of these people listed on the, on the slide, which uh, if you know us, we are kind of a new crop of scientists. We have all been, we have all finished our PhDs in like the last 10 years and uh, have been hired as, as researchers and professors uh, in this more or less same time frame. And I'm here to try to discuss exactly what it says on the team, the Brazilian participation in the next generation collider experiments. So if you could go next to the next slide, please. Um, obviously, I don't, I don't, it doesn't bear repeating. Uh, high energy collider physics is the subfield of particle physics. We build our large accelerators and we make the high energy collisions in order, high energy collisions in order to study physics at uh, its deeper structure. Uh, we do discoveries, we do precision physics, we test the standard model. We search for physics beyond the standard model. And as of uh, 20, and for some time now, and as of uh, 2020, all of this, uh, this physics is done in the context of big science. So it's these uh, super large experiments run by extremely large international collaborations. Uh, Atlas and CMS are. Uh, are the pinnacle of the, of the largeness in this sense with 3000 authors each. And, uh, but uh, all of the, for instance, the four experiments in the LHC and uh, the experiments at uh, the relativistic, relativistic heavy ion collider as well uh, have uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, collaborators. And in the near past, there were many more active colliders at the same time. So here I have a picture of the RIC, of the LHC, of the Tevatron, of the, of Slack. And uh, right now we, uh, we have less of them. But what's happening, if you see it in the next slide, is that uh, new, mm, new proposals are being put on the table. So first, let me speak about the current status of our community right now in Brazil. I, again, I'm speaking only about uh, the collider part, okay? Not the, not the telescopes, not the observatories. So our personal power is, is more or less 100 members in the community in between uh, professors, postdocs, uh, students, and so on. Or uh, the infrastructure that is available right now, so the colliders. Right now, there is the LHC and the RIC, and Brazil participates in all six of the experiments as far as, far as I know. And the path started more or less until 2035, which is the, the end of the high luminosity LHC program. I don't know details about the, the status of the RIC program, but it, uh, it should be something like that as well. On the medium long term, so the next accelerator, there is still, the, is still an open question. There are some proposals in the table already. So there is the circular electron positron collider in China, the linear collider, which will be either the ILC in Japan or the CLIC in Geneva, and the future circular collider also Propose, uh, also proposed uh, uh, in Geneva. And not in the slide because it was updated later, but the electron ion collider has been recently approved to be built in Brookhaven. Now, all of these experiments are colliders and they all search for different physics, but there is this common core in there. And of course, to build, them, to build these experiments and participate on them, we need funding. 
and uh, this talk this talk is essentially physics free. I'm talking about the sociological, economical, and and political part of the problem. How is funding working right now? As of right now, it's groups and individuals they submit proposals to their funding agencies, and everybody is submitting the the proposals more or less in a separate way. So we have heard some uh, some. Uh, in the, in the previous talks, for instance, the Alice group proposed their, the, the, the project to the funding agency, the CMS group, which I'm part of, also proposed their project to the funding agencies, and so on, so on and so forth. And one of the key difficulties is that there is, a, is that it's difficult to secure the long-term grants which are needed for the, for the timeline of this experiment. Now, there is, a, there is a structure in Brazil called the RENAFI, Rede Nacional de Física de Alta Energia, so the High Energy Physics Network, which helps expand and consolidate the HEP research in Brazil. The key point, however, is that RENAFI is not a funding agency. It instead is this organ which tries to do this orchestration and then go to the funding agencies. So, in next slide, we we, the group, the, the group of people who have decided to start thinking about this problem of the next generation colliders, don't think that uh, this structure is, uh, is scalable to this next challenge. So this, uh, let's speak about first the, the contributions of the, of the Brazilian community. It, it should be that our first share should be more or less one to 2% of the total funding needed. And, uh, we know that the cost of to, to build and then to operate of these colliders is, not, is on the order of billions of dollars. So you can make the calculation by ourselves. We will need to do hardware contribution, software contribution. We will need to update our instrumentation labs, update our computing centers, with new storage, new computing cores, new connectivity. And uh, this should not only be at the beginning of the experiment, but should be guaranteed over the, of the lifetime of the experiment, which is something like 30 years. So we are on the opinion that it cannot be done just by point, uh, uh, point funding proposals like it has been done until now. There should be a long-term overall strategy of the community. This also happens to be uh, ha happens to happen on the same side on human resources. We have to train our students in the local institutes, secure fund funding to send them to the experiments to do the work and to complete their training. And at the same time, we should, uh, we should have the possibility of attracting international researchers to work with us in Brazil and foster collaboration. As it was previously mentioned, there were some, uh, some programs like that, like HALA, Any Planet, but uh, lately this has been dwindling. And this is a problem. We need, again, long-term commitment to keep the, co the collaboration going on. In next slide, please. So the, the objective of a white paper was to draw attention to this, to this discussion and to start uh, searching for proposals to make this, uh, to turn this into, into, into a real uh, thing that's happening. So our objective is to organize this community of experimental collider high energy physics in Brazil. For instance, to agree on what or, or which big generic experiment we want to join for the next high energy collider. This can be a bit controversial, but we can discuss this later. We should choose one. Of course, this doesn't preclude the organization connection of the smaller groups in the country with an interest in more specific experiments. So of course, the heavy ion people will want to join the collaboration that will study uh, heavy ion physics. If there are deep inelastic scattering uh, uh, colliders, some group of people will want to join that. But in general, for the next, general purpose experiment, we should try to make our best effort to join one and only one. And then, and this is the big, uh, this is the, 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 the kernel of this, the proposal, we should try to restructure our organization from this situation where we have different individual or, or group proposals 
uh, being done to the funding agents and orchestrated at some level to, uh, by Renafi to evolve towards a national institute type of entity, something called something close to the Instituto Nacional de Ciência e Tecnologia, INCT. And in the long term, we would like to build the local physical infrastructure with one or more national laboratory labs, like it's done, for instance, in the in the US or in Europe, where there are, there are the national lab for the high energy physics community, both for instrumentation, both for computing and uh, data processing analysis, everything. We should have a focal point. Of course, the politics of, of that are complicated, but we understand that there, uh, there is a lot of value on having the focal point. And this is not, and finally in the last slide, you may say that uh, this is either not a good idea or impossible, but there are uh, some examples already, right? It's uh, even the US, which has a lot of organization, a lot of funding, they have, uh, fo they have focal points. For instance, Fermilab is the, fo the, the focal point of high energy physics in the US, even though there are many other labs which are also extremely important and productive, but the importance of Fermilab cannot be denied. Maybe it doesn't have to be a physical place. Maybe we can have a structure like ANFN in Italy, where they are they don't have a single center lab, but they are they have they are these research agencies which has these spots in all the institute of the in all the universities and acts as a as a as a quite quasi collaboration in a sense. And even here in Brazil, we managed to do that, albeit in another area. So uh, uh, all Brazilian physicists know about CNPEN, which is the National Laboratory for Research on Materials and Energy. And that the existence of that laboratory is a great asset to the material science uh, phys physicists. And there is no reason why it shouldn't be the same for us. So with this, I conclude my talk. Thank you very much. Okay, Tiago, thank you uh, uh, for the presentation and uh, bringing up uh, the topic of uh, organization and how to think with research key. Um, so uh, we will move then uh, forward for the next uh, presentation of uh, Alinka Lepine-Civi that is going to talk about nuclear science in, in Brazil. <coughs> Uh, I want to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak about uh, our field nuclear science in Brazil. Next, please. Well, the scientific field of nuclear science has different topics. There are the high energy topics as hadron physics, QCD and structure of hadrons and nuclei, QCD and phases of strongly interacting matter at extreme conditions, then the lower energy part, nuclear structure and reaction dynamics, nuclear astrophysics, fundamental symmetries, applications, and societal benefits. Uh, here, some subjects have overlapped with, with the field of high energy physics. Next uh, slide, please. Next. Next slide. Well, here I show the map of Brazil and the, um, I think there was one, okay. Yes, this, this is. Uh, in 2017 began uh, an INCT, which was um, referenced before the, the, the talk before. This is the largest uh, funding project in Brazil. And we have one uh, approved in 2016. And this, is, this was very useful because this united all the nuclear physics community in a large project. It is a CNPQ FAPERS funding program, and its objectives are consolidate the community of nuclear physics and applications of excellence, provide the scientific environment of international reference for the development of young scientists in the coming decades, and to disseminate to society the knowledge of nuclear science. Next. Here we have the map of Brazil with the different regions and the different states, and the small rectangles represent groups. Uh, we divided, I divided in three subfields, high energy nuclear physics, nuclear structure and reactions and nuclear physics applications. 
Uh, here we have 40 institutions in 10 states. This is corresponds to 172 researchers, 80 in high energy, 45 in nuclear structure, and 47 in applications, and about 92 students. The majority of the activity is in the Southeast region. There are 25 groups. In South, we have seven. In Northeast, five. North, two. And Central West, one. The numbers of researchers and students are mainly based on, on uh, the number in the INCT. And they are probably underestimated for high energy and for applications, because there are some groups which are not included in the INCT. So there can be an underestimation. Next slide. Well, the field in Brazil of high energy nuclear physics, in the theory, uh, there are 17 researchers working in hadron theory, effective models, QCD, some rules, 14 in stars, uh, equation of state, squares and hadrons, magnetic field, 18 in heavy ions, hydrodynamics, square gluon plasma, nine researchers in QCD phenomenology, low X and color glass condensate, and nine again in in lattice, QCD theory, and Dyson Schwinger equ um, equation. In the experimental side, uh, every, uh, there are eight researchers working in heavy ions, square gluon plasma, hydrodynamics at ALICE, three, uh, uh, three researchers working at CMS, and one researcher at Star Rig and S Phoenix Rig. Next. The perspectives of the high energy nuclear physics in Brazil are many points here but to establish stronger links between theoretical and experimental groups and um, between theoretical communities, access to high performance computing systems, attract new students and postdocs, expand and strengthen national and international collaborations, focus on upcoming experiments, intermediate and long term planning, geographical expansion increase the number of groups doing lattice calculations, increase the number of experimentalists in general, and mainly in hadron physics, more activity in phenomenology, and more activity in equation of state of nuclear matter, phase transition at high baryonic chemical potential. Next. Well, for the low energy part, the nuclear structure and reactions activity in Brazil is divided more or less half and half between theory and experiments. There are seven researchers doing calculations of direct reactions with breakup of radioactive and stable nuclei. This is interacting with interesting subject because it means you have to couple channels between bound and uh, continuum. Description of light exotic nuclei using few body models. Dirac Hartree for Bogolyubov and Dirac Bruckner approximation for nuclear matter and finite nuclei. Study of stable and exotic nuclei, including pairing effects and effective theories for weakly bound nuclear systems. This is the theory side. On the experiment, we are working mainly at the tandem in Sao Paulo. There are 25 researchers working, measuring nuclear reactions with radioactive and stable beams. Uh, three of them measuring reactions with astrophysical interest and one doing uh, nuclear structure with gamma spectroscopy. Next slide. Here is our facility. It is at the Open Laboratory for Nuclear Physics at the University of Sao Paulo. It's an eight megawatt electron tandem accelerator with several beam lines. The main of them are one beam line for radioactive beams and the large multipotter scattering chamber for stable beams. We have about 60 to 70 users, staff among staff members, postdocs, graduate students, and external users. We have a project advisory committee, and we have beams of stable and radioactive beams of, with energy with 5 million electron volts per nucleon. The radioactive ion beams in Brazil is the first and for the moment only radioactive beam facility in the southern hemisphere. It is constituted of two superconducting solenoids, which make a zero uh, uh, magnetic uh, rigidity separation of the produced beam in a target before the first solenoid, and it produces light radioactive beams as helium-6, beryllium-7, boron-8, uh, lithium-8, beryllium-10, boron-12, and so on. 
recently we had approved a large uh, thematic project from FAPESP, and now we are making a large upgrade in the detection and electronics. So we are buying thin single and double-sided strip detectors for charged particle detections. We are changing from germanium detectors to liso crystals for gamma detection, with silicon photomultiplier producing large arrays in the scattering chamber. We have neutron wall and all the electronics will be digital. Next slide. The achievements of the Brazilian nuclear science community in three years between 2017 and 2019 is almost 1,000 publications in peer-reviewed journals, 96 master theses and 56 PhD theses, 30 postdocs. There's a large number of projects supported by funding agencies, large number of international collaborations and large number of participation in the international conferences. Next slide, please. Well, the findings of this white paper that we have a very qualified team of researchers englobing all activities in nuclear science. There is a sound and increasing collaboration between theory groups. The collaboration between experimental and theory groups is very strong in nuclear structure. There is practically no experimental activity in hadron physics in Brazil. And we have, as I think, almost all groups in, in Brazil, uh, serious problems for science funding, for fellowship for students, postdocs, travel expenses for collaboration. The, rec the main recommendations of this white paper are expansion to other regions and states in Brazil. We have future plans for new experimental infrastructure for nuclear structure and reactions and propose to establish collaboration with the strong Chilean experimental hadron physics group. The highlights of our activity in the high energy part, the SAMPA chip developed at USP included in the upgrade of ALICE, the study of hybrid starts, uh, equation of state of both hadronic and quark matter compatible with the existence of a phase transition at low temperature and high baryonic chemical potential as in the QCD phase diagram. In nuclear structure reactions, the low energy radioactive ion beams of Ribras this digital upgrade financed by this new project will have an important role in the international scenario. And there is one more thing that I want to speak. The next slide, please. We already have a strong Latin American collaboration in nuclear physics. We have the Latin American Symposium on Nuclear Physics and Application since 1995, uh, uh, the first two, every two years. And it is moving. Uh, every two years from one country to the other. So it was began at Venezuela, then Colombia, Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, Peru, Chile, Ecuador, Uruguay, Colombia. 2017, it was in Cuba. And 2020, it was in Costa Rica. And since 2011, it is supported by IUPA. In 2009, at the uh, Latin American Symposium in Santiago, the researchers representing uh, several Latin American countries decided to make an association, which is called Asociación Latinoamericana de Física Nuclear y Aplicaciones, ALAFNA. This is more an experts committee, and its main activity has been to organize the symposia. It is recognized by IUPAP, and it represents Latin America in the working group nine of IUPAP, which is the working group of international collaboration in nuclear physics. The objectives of ALAFNA are to strengthen ties among the Latin American communities doing nuclear research, foster collaboration and promotion of activities, to educate the scientific community and the general public through the promotion of nuclear physics, to do periodic overall assessment of nuclear science in Latin America in the context of worldwide activities, and to discuss at the multinational level future planning of nuclear science activities. Recently, we began a collaboration between ALAFNA and the International Atomic Energy Agency. We will have a meeting in November in Vienna to discuss uh, how this agency can help ALAFNA and Latin American nuclear physics. Well, that's my talk, and thank you for your attention. Hi, uh, thanks, Alinka, for, for the presentation. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, as, as you can see in this slide, I mean, the, the nuclear science community in our region have a long history and it's well established, and it's 
it's nice to see how it's now entering or found in a synergy with new activities and new fields. So, the same. so then uh, we move forward for, for the last uh, presentation of uh, Edward de la Cruz. Uh, he's going to talk about uh, tau physics at the bed through experiment. Uh, so just remember, I may call your attention when nine minutes are, are passed. So Edward. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, well, my name is Eduardo de la Cruz Burelo from the physics department in Simbestad, Mexico. Uh, we have in Simbestad uh, involvement in CMS, Alice, Bell2, also a group starting in NICA. And uh, well, I would like to thank the organizer uh, for allowing me to present this because even we, we reacted quite late to, to the call for contributions. Uh, in the outline is everything I would like to show you, but I don't have the time for that, so I will leave it there. I would like to, to give you a sense of how, how this happened. Next slide, please. Uh, I would like to point this uh, because uh, the joining of Mexico to Bell was not an individual effort. It was uh, something that was born in the core of the Mexican network on high energy physics. There was uh, a work preparing the roadmap for the high energy physics in Mexico. And it was identified in that, uh, in that uh, meetings that Mexico need, needed to develop the experimental side in the intensity frontier. We have groups already working in ALI, CMS, and other experiments. And then the, the community decided that we need to, to develop this part. So a group of theoreticians working with uh, uh, experimentalists uh, decided to join the suburban project in Italy, mainly because uh, we have a lot of experience working with CERN. So Italy was close to, to that, and we will, it will be probably kind of an extent of our work being developed at CERN. So that was the, the main idea of the community when we decided to do this. Unfortunately, we know that the Super B was canceled. And after it was canceled in 2012, uh, the, the group uh, that decided to join have a meeting and what part of the group decided to drop the effort and all part of the group decided to continue and move to Super Kit B and join the Bell 2 next year. Uh, the group that reminded it, uh, and once you joined the Bell, Bell 2, decided to, to work together uh, because it was the main idea of, of, uh, of the effort. And uh, because of the reminding theoreticians and the experimentalists that were there, we decided to concentrate at least at the beginning of, of, the, of the effort in tau electron physics. That's the, the idea of this. Next slide, please. Just, this is just to tell you a little bit of, of what is the idea, the main idea of this. So per B is going to provide 50 times uh, more data that the, uh, we have in the previous B factory. So the, the data we're going to get is, is a little bit uh, more, and of course that will allow us to do more studies. Next slide, please. Uh, the, talking about tau physics, uh, uh, because of the branch, is because of the cross section, sorry, uh, that we have for, for the, even it's a B factory, the cross section we have for, for tau pairs is pretty much comparable to the ones that we have for Bs. So that's uh, the B, this super kit B is also a tau factory. We are going to have almost five to 10 to 10 tau pairs there to study a lot of things there. That's why we decided to move the tau to the tau physics. Next slide, please. Just to tell you a little bit, uh, for the standards that we say of, of what we have now, this is a small now collaboration of around 1,000 members and Probably half of the members are, are students, most of them PhD students, but we also have masters and undergraduate students there. We already overpassed the 100 institutions in 26 countries working there. And this is just a picture of a small part of the home, be, below closing the detector section. Next slide, please. Uh, about Mexico. Mexico, uh, well, as I mentioned, we joined it seven years ago. Currently, we have, we are three institutions to in Mexico City, Simbestad in, in the physics department, the Institute of Physics in, in the National University of NAM. And we have also a group in the Autonomous University of Sinaloa, which is in, in the north part of Mexico, of the country. And so far as we are for the moment, there's eight faculties, six experimentalists, two theoreticians, and we have at the moment six PhD students and probably two or three master students. But so the group is, is around 15, 16 people working there. And so it's, it's not a small group, uh, at least at the moment. 
the commitment that we got once we joined uh, Bell 2 was that we had to, of course, work on some hardware. Unfortunately, when we joined it, everything was already being built and installed. So uh, the, the option we had was to, to join in the electronic of the large angle being installed on monitor. Uh, for the software part, uh, we uh, have the commitment of with some grid support. Uh, we did this with a PhD student that fortunately graduated uh, last year and now is a postdoctoral in Mississippi and is continuing doing the grid support, but now of course with Mississippi, but we at least uh, comply with that requirement. And for the computer, and this is something that is uh, required for all, all institutions, actually has come to you know has institutions, is that we have to provide uh, computing depending on the number of uh, participants that we have per country. And so we had to provide a tier two cluster for the grid uh, for Bell 2. Next slide, please. So uh, just to show you that we complied with the commitments, uh, the, the tier two center for Bell 2 has been online uh, since uh, May, 2015, and is uh, working uh, something like 90, 95% efficient. So that's uh, something that's working quite well. Unfortunately, this is uh, only working well for Monte Carlo productions. Once we try to do uh, data analysis, uh, the bandwidth becomes a problem for, for, for this. Uh, so for the moment, it's only Monte Carlo production, but uh, uh, is participating most of the time. Uh, of, we, we also comply with the participation in the, in the lab M detector. It it's actually has been installed, it's working. And the part of the group is actually the, the Autonomous University of Sinaloa uh, is, is working there. It's, uh, uh, working also important role in the maintenance and operation of this, and where we expect uh, soon to have some papers coming out. Those this participation on on the lab uh, detector for the monitor of the luminosity. Next slide, please. Just to tell you a little bit of, of what uh, is our idea there. Of course, uh, between all these uh, new physics that we we, just, we want uh, or expect to 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 search in, in all these experiments. The uh, super P factor is uh, pointing mostly to the flavor physics in the BED and tau sectors. And even we in, in the Mexican group, we have people working in all of them. Uh, we mainly concentrate in, in the tau physics. Next slide, please. Uh, the problem that we, we somehow face uh, with the tau physics is that we, we have a lot of neutrinos there, so we cannot reconstruct fully the events. To have to work with the kinematics that we have, that we know precisely the initial kinematic, but not the end one. And then we have to, to work with that. Next slide, please. The concentration that we have now on the on the uh, Bell 2, uh, we are working mainly in electron flavor and number violation processes. Of course, we have uh, with the neutrino oscillation, we know that we have uh, this uh, electron flavor violation in the standard beyond the standard model but we haven't been able to detect this in charged electrons. Uh, where we know that this, next slide please. Where we, we have uh, these uh, uh, limits, uh, but not success so far. And the idea is that uh, with Bell 2, we could do uh, a little bit better in this. Next slide please. Uh, what we can do with taus uh, uh, for electron flavor, electron number violations, where well, we have some golden channels there uh, we have we have been working now in tau to to lepton gamma and also tau to to three leptons. This is something where the Mexican group is is working uh, very hard. Uh, unfortunately, we we need a lot of data for this, but at the moment we we have been working and we hope to to have some uh, some presentation this for the upcoming conference uh, at least or the status that we have now. But we are working on that. As well, we have uh, uh, other things going on that we can do this also also in, in three and loops in, in the B physics. Next slide, please. This is probably hard to see, but this uh, everything that we can do with the with the electron flavor violation in tau decays and all the different decays that could be studied. And the idea is just to show that we have uh, on top of that every, all the measurements that have been coming from Clio, Barbell, LHCB, they have been doing very good, also Atlas. But what the idea is that with the Bell 2 data, we will be able to go down at least one or two order of magnitudes to the limits that we have in the electron flavor variation using tau decay. So they, that's the main idea. And one of the concentrations, some of these decays is something that's been working in the Mexican group. Next slide, please. 
I, I cannot tell you everything that we, we could do or we can do or we had been doing actually uh, in, in Bell 2 uh, experiment for, for the electron flare violation, electron number violation as well. But what uh, I invite you is you have the time to take a look. There is a, a Tao section for the Bell 2 physics book in which actually the uh, our, our theoreticians in Mexico, colleagues uh, from the theoretical side, participated uh, in order to have all these ideas uh, in, to, in place, let's say, to, to work closely on the experimental uh, part and the theoretical part in order to, to get the best that we can get from the data that we expect from the Bell 2. So in this, the Bell physics book uh, is, is uh, signed also for, for the Mexican tradition that participate in there. So if you have time, they will have uh, more, more clear uh, things that we can do with, with Taos, at least for the moment. Next slide, please. Oh, sorry, Edward. Nine, yeah. uh, nine minutes past. Okay, I probably will uh, skip this. I will next slide, please. This is just to show you uh, uh, that we have been working already. We we are reconstructing taos. This is something part of the Mexican group. Next slide, please. Uh, so we are measuring actually the mass of the tau just to to show you that uh, we can actually identify taos and everything. Next slide. And we, of course, the statistical uncertainty is quite huge because it's a small part of the data. It's just the beginning of the data. And next slide. Uh, the, just to give you my summary. Uh, the performance so far, for if we talk about the, the, the Bell 2 has detector is, is quite good. Quite good. Uh, of course, we have now in shutdown. A few days ago, we started the shutdown on the October for maintenance. So far, we have been coming with two publication, physics publication, and we have other in the pipeline coming soon. And what the idea, as I mentioned, is that we are going to have uh, a lot of tiles there, and the idea is to extract uh, the most of the information we could have from them. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, we are working now in electro flare tau physics, and what I invite you to check everything that we can do. But well, I just wanted to point out that this was an effort that uh, was born in, in the core of the community in Mexico. And well, it's part of the things that we have been doing as a community in Mexico. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you especially that the, uh, the presentation is coming in the form of uh, so, uh, uh, so then, uh, thank you for uh, all the, the speakers and the nice presentation. So we we'll move now um, uh, forward to the open discussion. I think for this, we will come back to Martin, but uh, have some slide to, to open the, the discussion. So. Yeah, or, or do you want to open the floor first uh, for some questions that directly uh, were inspired by the talks, or? Well, maybe you can open the, the discussion and we see how we develop. Oh. Oh, no. Okay, if you want, maybe uh, we can yeah, we do five minutes, uh, 10 minutes discussion. Uh, okay, look, let's if, see. if there are no... Uh, Questions. Reactions, we can uh, continue with some. Uh, there's uh, a raised hand. Tiago. Hi, Tiago, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so uh, the speaker before me, sorry, I couldn't get their name. They showed the Nature LHC shadow, which I had never seen it going to 2039 before. I had seen 2035, but not 2039. I had never heard of Run 6. Is this new to me? I mean, is this an idea? Is this approved or what gives? I think it's a question to Fernando. So I think it's... Uh... Uh, it was for me, Fernando, you mean? I think so. You were before uh, Tiago to me. Uh, I, I'm not Tiago, I'm not sure which slide you mentioned. It was one of the backup slides. Okay. Uh, 
one oh. Uh, um, you have a, ah, okay, the, the LHC collision plans, I think it's slide 14. Yes. Yes. Fernando, yes. This, this one? It goes to 2039. I had never seen it going in for 2039. Oh, yes. I mean, um, well, um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's, uh, so this is the, the last official plan. Uh, maybe this is, uh, yeah. yeah, there is an outdated. Sorry. So, sorry, Martin, you were going to say something. Uh, well, so I, I, I don't know if this is, uh, maybe this is more up to date than the other plots we have seen. No, it's so, not, right. So I, I, I don't know exactly. Okay, we can- Because if I, if I go right now to the High Lumi LHC website, I cannot find this plot. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, this was one of the, uh, it might be outdated, right? Because we are already in 20 and then we didn't start ranking yet, right? So this must be maybe outdated. Yeah. But still, uh, the three runs in the high luminosity LHC, I think that didn't change as far as I understand. So first run will be run four for sure. And the idea is this ramping up of the instantaneous luminosity is true. Then we are going to have, as far as I understand still, two more runs with high with highest luminosity or highest instantaneous luminosity. I think that's still the plan. Now the schedule, uh, yes, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of dynamics, right? So, uh, it's going to it's going to be modified, probably. So we are, we are starting the run three at some point next year. So everything is going to be moved at least one year to the right. Well, in principle, officially, the start of the uh, of the run four kind of stays in the same place. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Or if you find the link in any case, of this. Uh... Okay. Uh, yeah, I have a question for Murilo. Uh, uh, the LHCB are great uh, plans. I mean, we have here recently the news about this new tetraquark particle. So, I mean, this. Uh, is this this new new window in, in for QCD? Uh, so I wonder if uh, for the upgrades, uh, although uh, we have more more statistics and we do uh, more precise studies with, um, with more statistics, I wonder if there is any kind of experimental or detector upgrade that will help, on, particularly in this uh, tetra quark or pentaquark quark stage. Hello. Uh, yeah, that's uh, very interesting. So I think uh, maybe uh, if we go to one of my backup slides, um, how can I show that? Uh, sorry, I'm just, uh, so if we go to slide, uh, I, I don't have the number here, but uh, maybe, okay, maybe I have both. Okay. So no, no, go, go back a little bit, go back, go back. Go back, uh, go back, yeah, go back, uh, go back, go back, yeah, uh, yeah, that, that, no, next, yeah, uh, no, no, that's not the one, yeah, that's a bit, uh, so in the, in the, it's funny because just after this, oh, yeah, that's one, that's the one, so this is, so as I, as I, as I mentioned, uh, before, the, um, uh, the upgrade, the LHCB upgrade in for run three is the one that uh, you see in the slide. So actually, so that's what we call that's our major upgrade, and uh, you see basically on the on the on the on this uh, on this uh, uh, five plots on the bottom, you see that uh, most of the detector uh, is actually being upgraded, and also the all the the readout. I know I'm sorry that the slide is not just. 
very very good. But uh, so the point is that um, uh, to to measure this uh, final state, and then uh, you have to uh, sometimes you reach the the threshold, and then uh, you really want to go to to low momentum. So uh, the, the 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 tracking of the grade. Uh, it's going to improve that, and also the 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 PID is being upgraded to, to to work better in a in a in a more busy environment uh, since we are taking data now with uh, more pilot. But also uh, maybe now now in the next slide, uh, uh, not in the next one, sorry, next. Yeah, maybe the, no, next, next, sorry. I think this one is good, okay. Uh, no, no, next, sorry, next. And again, next. I would want to, yeah. Okay, next one. I, I wanted to say about something about the trigger. So next, uh, next, next. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the, the one, yeah. So one of, uh, I think one of the, in uh, I mean, besides the the, the the hardware that's being upgraded, then uh, it's going to improve uh, the detector uh, performance. We also are uh, putting a lot of force in this uh, trigger upgrade, where we trying to reduce as much as possible the, the thresholds, so that uh, we are sensitive to to all any possible exotic state. So uh, state. So these are for for instance these are. This kind of physics will continue for sure with more data, and uh, hopefully we can also uh, find. Uh, I mean, we are sensitive. We can be sensitive to other um, uh, uh, states like this. I don't know if that's the answer. You, that answers your question. Yeah, maybe this one is yes. with the structures. Maybe we can. Yeah, so one thing that I wanted to, to maybe to stress a little bit is that the, the, the we, I mean, as usual, we, we had uh, in run one, run two, this uh, hardware trigger. So we, this we don't have anymore. Uh, the data go, is going directly to software trigger. That's how we, we manage to, 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 to go to lower threshold. And uh, this is a challenge because you have, of course, um, uh, more data to, to take care take care of in a in a rate that the software was not used to, and uh, actually a few um, uh, one month more or less ago, uh, we 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 made the decision to do the the this first stage, the, the what we call it a uh, high level trigger one, is going to be uh, fully in uh, GPUs, so and uh, this is going to of course help. To, to, yeah, it's going to help to, to, to achieve the goal that we are aiming. Okay, thank you. So we have a question there. Uh, Inares, raise your hand. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, uh, just to present myself, I'm Roberto Linares from uh, Federal Fluminense University. Uh, hi, Alinka, I, I know that you are there. So uh, I have a, not a question, but maybe a comment on, on the talk of Monticelli. And also, I think that this is somehow connected to the talk of Tiago, that uh, Monticelli mentioned that uh, they have plans for a lab, a local lab for to develop, if I understood well, to develop uh, instrumentation. And uh, I know that in Argentina, there is also a, a tandem accelerator that deals with a, a different physics, but also nuclear physics is just low energy. But, and my question is, are there any plans to use uh, or to powerhouse uh, the instrumentation and all the things uh, to perform uh, studies in, in the tandem accelerator in Argentina, and also to Tiago, if there are any plans to, because in Sao Paulo, we also have an accelerator, uh, and Alinka presented that, that there, there are 
many uh, investments in, in the accelerator for the electronics. So there might be opportunities for, uh, not, I, I'm, I'm not saying to perform high energy experiments, but to adapt uh, things that are used in the high energy to things that can be do, done in the low energy. If, uh, if you can comment on that, thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks for your question, um, Luis Fernando. So, uh, well, in principle, it's a very, very, very different kind of thing. So, what we mentioned in our in our slides, uh, and uh, which is part of the maybe the reason of the of this development, is that uh, so as as long as we make this development, uh, of course, we we can have the know how to build hardware for other other stuff or other uh, equipment or something. But in principle, the answer to your question is no. There, there's, no there, there's no plan to, to, to make any, any hardware for the, for the Dandara uh, uh, accelerator for us. Uh, can I make a comment also? Yes, please. Uh, well, uh, we... Uh, in, in Alafna, I think there would be space to have a larger collaboration in instrumentation between Argentina, Tandar, and, and Sao Paulo. Uh, when, before we, we decided to buy our digitizers, I was discussing with um, the people from, from Samba Chip, but the, the parameters of the Samba Chip were not at all uh, adequate for, for our case. So the, the problem is that in high energy physics, you have uh, to miniaturize and you have a very, very large number of channels, much, order, much orders of magnitude larger than ours, but on each channel, sometimes you are not so precise. So for the moment, we do not have a real instrumentation um, laboratory, we are buying um, equipment, but I think it would be interesting to think about uh, beginning to make. And I'm I'm not so excluded exclusive with the high energy. I think there are things that we could discuss, and we could get um, input one from the other. So it it is um, it would be important to have some collaboration, in my opinion. May I comment? Maybe also, uh, yeah. uh, colleagues, to say something. I mean, it's not. Uh, it's not. Um, my answer would be: it's not not for forever, right? So the thing is that the aim of this is for for instrumentation, for acquisition and stuff. So at some point, we uh, we will have know-how and, and right and uh, and equipment and stuff for doing instrumentation. And there's probably high chances that we can uh, collaborate with other areas let's say and uh, also maybe i don't know but I, for now what i what i mean is that for what i see because currently since we are starting so the, our aim is the precision um and, and high speed uh, data acquisition and uh and fpgas which is also uh, apply and um, implemented for example in satellite technology and these are closer stuff maybe for us right now uh, so uh, i agree that collaboration should be uh, it should not be, let's say, neglected, never. So it's fine. Uh, but anyway, um, so we are starting to build this up. This is the aim. And uh, maybe now, already now, uh, and for this first part of the plan, it's very little overlap, which doesn't mean uh, we can't uh, at some point collaborate in, in the future and then uh, take profit from our facilities and know-how and instrumentation uh, so we can actually you know, profit uh, both. I don't know if I made my point clear or if. Or if uh... Yes, yes. I think um, maybe not for the moment, but for the future, it would be interesting to begin to discuss and see what are the common points and how we can um, profit from from these po common points for for uh, each of the fields. So yes. I, I, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, okay, Diego. I think. Uh, um, if you see about this topic. I, I also want to ask uh, about the talk from Argentina 
about the experience uh, of a country to work in a single experiment, contrary, for example, to Brazil and Colombia, where we have participation in both CMS and APSA. Um, what is your experience uh, in, in, this, in this aspect, uh, your recommendation for future experiments, large experiment, large collider experiment? So maybe this is more a question for Tere. I mean, in any case, we are not a very big. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yes, I, I can I can comment on, on the general scope and mm -hmm. from our experience, um, we uh, our community is not uh, very large. Uh, of course, that is an order of magnitude that uh, what it was uh, 10 years ago, so we are very proud of that. But uh, what we think, uh, what we discuss with the leaders of the different groups involved uh, from the beginning is not to uh, fragment uh, ourselves. So we decided to move um, always uh, more or less together on the same experiment and not have a few people in one experiment and few people in another. Okay. Uh, so maybe uh, we can maybe move to a presentation of Martin. So I want to just to make a, a comment about the discussion about the, the, the nuclear physics community that, uh, as I mentioned, have a long tradition in history in our region. And uh, it's good to see how it's found in the synergies in terms of uh, physics and also in terms of instrumentation. Uh, and also it's the, the only white papers I think is related to accelerators. So there is uh, maybe something to think how in the accelerator itself, there is a vacancy in the region. So it's important to see if we can find synergies. And also in terms of, uh, let's say, a spin-off of application, I think uh, nuclear physics in terms of uh, neutron therapy and these kind of things using accelerators to apply to, to, to medicine is also something important to watch out and see how we can, <clears throat> from the different fields, contribute to this synergy with other application fields. Uh, so, uh, okay, then, uh, Martin, we move to your slides. Yeah, let me, I mean, this is, it's not really a presentation or anything, but uh, yesterday after the session, I, I brainstormed a, a little bit uh, also with, with, with Mauro and Alfonso and, uh, and Edgar uh, after the, the discussion we had yesterday and we had we we had some follow up thoughts, so maybe we can pick up the discussion where it where it left, um, but we don't have to. We can also save this for later. But um, I see there are no other raised hands. So um, actually, yeah. So the the first I, I have two slides, uh, but this one, the first bullet point here, uh, connects naturally to what we were just discussing with, with Terra also, that uh, you have to find a balance perhaps between uh, consolidating or focusing on, on one effort or uh, wanting or trying to create more diversity with, with new projects, right? And then one of the considerations that uh, uh, Marcella mentioned yesterday, I believe is, the question uh, how much do you really have to focus or how how big do you have to be to have a recognition in a large collaboration right so uh, one question i had is that, or comment is that this really depends on the kind of recognition or impact that you're talking about and i think that um, Marcella mentioned if you ask the the spokesperson of a large collaboration like like June or LHC experiment, um, do they really know about this uh, uh, the the participation of a, of a given group or 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 a student? And I, I think if you talk about individual recognition, 
of good work uh, that is done by talented young people, um, I think that that works pretty well, at least inside the large collaboration. If you ask the spokesperson, he will be aware of uh, many examples of uh, young people from wherever they are that, that have had a, a large impact and, and visibility. Uh, so I say here easy with, with very big quotation marks because of course nothing is, is really easy. But I, I, I don't think there is a big issue there. Um, what is more difficult often is to then, uh, even for this individual impact for, of a young researcher to explain this uh, outside the experiment. And, and there, um, the, I don't only mean outside far away, but, but even maybe in some cases back home in the home country. Uh, so uh, uh, there might be a, a tension between so young persons to, to, to have a, a big role uh, or a coordinate, technical coordination, building detectors in the experiment or, or leading a research group. Sometimes in order to participate eff effectively, um, you have to be based at CERN. Maybe this is now changing with all the teleworking, but um, and but if the, the the scientist in question is based too much at CERN, then maybe there could be a worry that back home colleagues don't see anything and think that this person is not um, a, a wonder what the person is doing exactly, and so there could be a, also a visibility issue. So I don't know if this is interesting topic to discuss here but uh, um, so th those two are related to the individual recognition then if you talk about being recognized as a as a group or institute uh, for a large role in an experiment or in a physics topic then then we're talking um, probably about real advantage of uh, consolidating a bigger group and making bigger investments I, I will stop here for now and see if people want to comment on this. Um, Murillo? Yes, uh, I would like to comment on that since it's, um, uh, I mean, it's very interesting topic and actually something I always, I always think about it. And I will give an example. Um, well, I, I can go back to, to the big collaboration later, but uh, I'll give an example of that, uh, that you didn't mention, for instance, participation in, in, in big conferences. So one thing I, I, I guess I never saw, and I maybe it's useful to to maybe to, to start doing, or if it's done to 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 uh, publicize a little bit more, is the statistics of um, of uh, people that are based on Latin America participating on, on, on big conferences. Right, like uh, I was, let's say I, I chat. Uh, so, how many, uh, how many uh, of the, the the researchers, students? I mean, we can of course we can always divide uh, between students, uh, well, permanent or but uh, postdocs. But we, in, I think, in total, and so is how this is developing with time, uh, and. Uh, it's constant decaying, it's increasing. Uh, if people didn't go, why? I mean, they, so it's these kinds of things that uh, it, this is on one parameter, of course, but I think it's one of the parameters that uh, Latin America communi community should uh, pay attention of. Of course, there is this, so going back now to the big collaborations, so there is this parameter that uh, how uh, how many of us can take a leadership in, in this experiment, and then uh, there is a big uh, condition that uh, either you are based at CERN or you you have um, conditions to 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 at least go twice a year or three times a year in a, maybe some you know pe uh, periods of time that. Uh, that uh, maybe one month or so, and uh, uh, we should try to understand if uh, uh, 
why we don't take these positions more. Or, I mean, to keep, I mean, to have this statistic, I think it is it's going to be useful to to understand how is the community. Uh, I I I, uh, I mean, if you talk to the Spox actually, LHCB, they they know. I mean, they they are very happy with the contributions from. Uh, uh, Latin America, but uh, I think that the, this uh, uh, this point that uh, of keeping up, uh, the, uh, making the statistics, trying to understand why uh, we have we why we don't have more positions. I think that's our job, right? So I, I just like to 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 agree mm -hmm. with you on, on this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Edgar, do you want to? comment on this hello can you hear me yeah yeah all right yeah I, I would like to comment about maybe two points that are probably related so in general yeah it, it is very true that many people are uh, making already individual contributions which are very well recognized within the collaboration uh, but more and more I hear people uh, complaining and uh, suffering about the fact that um, authorities or uh, uh, people in charge of giving funding even uh, take less and less uh, consideration of papers and publications uh, that, that have many authors. I guess this is a problem uh, problem worldwide in high energy physics, but is it particularly uh, difficult in, in, in countries like in Latin America because um, the governments don't seem to appreciate those kind of uh, publications. <clears throat> and so um, this is also connected with the funding uh, issues that uh, have been mentioned um, in different talks in this symposium. And um, maybe just maybe uh, is worthwhile taking into a good consideration what Diego said, right? Would it be possible or even in the scope of this strategy forum to propose that, uh, or at least uh, recommend that uh, each country has a, a focal point that can, uh, you know, uh, make it make converge all the efforts in the country and and sort of manage this. I'm not sure, like, if a statement in that regard would help even in the funding area and the visibility and recognition outside our own collaborations. That's uh, so that, that those are the couple of points recognition and funding, and maybe if we can make an, a statement and if and if it's in the scope of this forum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think those are good suggestions to, to take into account, um, especially if we can also have some ideas or concrete proposals, perhaps. I mean, this is nothing. Um, uh, I mean, to some extent, these issues are known, of course, but it's very interesting to hear uh, your perspective on this. I can assure you that, uh, let's say, the doubts about how to weight uh, a publication with many, many authors on it is not specific for funding agencies in Latin America, of course. And uh, there are discussions in the different collaborations also on, on how to make it easier also for young people in the collaboration to have limited author publications. Um, I'm not sure to what extent this is being discussed in a coordinated way between collaborations, but uh, or maybe that is a suggestion that, that we could make. Martin, can I just make a comment about this? Sure. Ah, as a host, you cannot raise your hand, huh? Yes. No, I cannot raise my hand. So I'm a part of a, a collaboration called the Dark Energy Survey. And in this area of astronomy and cosmology, uh, the papers are not in alphabetical order. So people that are leading the analysis, they, they go first. They're tiers of authorship. So this is something that maybe the high energy physics community can think about. Okay, uh, so I think uh, we are reaching now the, the time of uh, 
start closing the we have a still a couple of questions so let's uh, uh, have three more comments i see in, in mauro eudor and then claudio and then with these uh, comments or questions then we will try to to close the, the session today so mauro eudor and then claudio okay so hi everyone can you hear me yes yes okay so uh, what i wanted to comment maybe compliments what Ed edgar said uh, a while ago uh, is that i think one of our uh, uh, biggest challenge uh, is to um, think really how to convey our message to the outside world as as, as is underlined there in in one of the bullets not only in terms of a recognition on a, but in, in, in the whole uh, uh, picture. I mean, uh, what, what I, I'm really concerned of is when we come to write this reading book, think to whom do we want to deliver the message uh, because that will determine what kind of support we will get from funding agencies, from people with political power to push these ideas in a Latin American context. So I think that that's one of the main issues where we will have to do a lot of brainstorming once this forum is done and, and, and that for, for the work that we have ahead. Uh, I'm not saying I have a, 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 an answer or a proposal on how to do this, but I think that's a, 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 an important thing that we'll have to think about for the future. Because the way in which the message is heard and carried uh, uh, will, will be very important to get the support we need. Otherwise, uh, it will remain like uh, initiatives from individual researchers in institutions trying to do things together. But if we don't have, say, a governmental support to do these things, then it will be very hard to, to achieve uh, what we want as a region. So that's my concern. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, Hi, Edward. Uh, this is, yeah, this is Edward. Can you hear me? Yeah, well, I, at least from the Mexican part, I, I would say that this is even a, a quite more difficult issue because. Uh, and probably before the for the young people, because uh, in Mexico, big part of your salary is coming from evaluation of the national system of researchers. It could be even more than half of your salary. And we have this problem. And we have the problem that they, they, they want to know how good are you doing even in this big experiment. And they don't care about uh, talks, even the plenary or, the, or in the best conference. They don't care about uh, leadership position in the experiment because they say that this is not physics. And of course, we try to explain that. But the point is that the committee is not, is not performed just for, and it's not part just of physics, it's uh, people from other areas of science. Uh, probably we can have one physicist there, and that does not mean uh, uh, someone that is uh, from the area, it could be any other area. But, uh, it's quite complicated because we, we have been seeing uh, young people uh, losing probably half of your, their salary because the evaluation are not good. Uh, and of course, these comments that were, that were made about the, the part of having this uh, in the first part of the paper, of the, the ones that did the analysis or something that Bell one was doing, but for Bell two, they decided not to do it in that way, go with the other, the way how the other uh, collaboration do it in some alphabetical order, but it is a problem. And at least in Mexico, at some point after some discussion with the funding agency, they asked us to present recommendation of how to evaluate us, but they don't want us <laughs> to actually give that recommendation. They want somebody above us. So probably this panel would be a, a good panel for prepare this kind of recommendation, how to evaluate uh, the people working in, in large experiments. Because, I mean, it's, it's the view not only uh, of Mexico, I mean, it's the view of 
I mean, I know that this problem is also in, in other parts of Latin America, but in Mexico, uh, it, it, it could be a problem because it's linked to the salary. I just wanted to say that. Okay, thanks. Claudio? Yes, a brief comment, um, um, which um, after Edgar uh, mentioned something about the publications, um, I remember that um, in the Chilean group in Atlas, they had the problem that the funding agency in Chile requires that there is an acknowledgement in the paper to the agency. And Atlas papers do not have that. I mean, I understand it will be a very long list of uh, agencies. So they, it's assumed that uh, if you are a part of the authors and you are belonging to some institution automatically, uh, the agency is uh, recognized, but somehow then um, this is always a permanent discussion here. I don't know if in other countries with other agencies happen the same, but maybe um, if this is a policy of Atlas and maybe all the experiments at CERN, they should uh, try to make some kind of, um, I don't know, declaration or something uh, with the agencies that finance these uh, scientists. So their work is recognized. Sorry, Claudio, but I don't, I don't uh, recall this at all. I mean, uh, in, in the papers, you can see the reference to the funding agencies. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I also would like to say the same. Uh, our funding agency is recognizing the Atlas paper. Yeah, this is not quite... Uh, Maybe then I'm confusing with something else, uh, but um, I remember that, that this was a complaint of some of our colleagues. No, oh, no, it has always been there in that list. Ah, uh, it, it, it may be not, sorry, maybe it's not the, it's not the funding agency, but it's the, say, it's the grant, it's the grant that is given by the funding agency. Yeah. Ah, okay. I, I expressed myself incorrectly, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's clear that uh, some kind of bureaucracy has to adapt to, to this kind of big collaboration. So. So, okay, let me then uh, say a word uh, uh, on this and then uh, we, can, we can close. Uh, so I think, uh, yes, I mean, of course, it's, it's somehow a bit different from this, uh, uh, let's say, the energy uh, collaborations, uh, and, uh, the situation of mobility and visibility, uh, different from the, maybe the astro particle experiments that are uh, here in, in the region. Uh, so it's more critical in this case. But uh, I think, uh, yeah, as was mentioned by Luciano at the very beginning in terms of mobility, I mean, when well, uh, Helen um, and it planet uh, disappear, I mean, this has a strong impact on the community and we couldn't uh, replace that yet. So I think it's in terms of mobility and visibility, uh, I think we, we should try to make uh, some statement uh, in, the, uh, in what uh, we are going to write, I mean, because it's something particularly important in the region um, uh, if we want to insert in the global picture. And in terms of uh, the collaboration, I think in general, uh, from my experience, the collaboration in the management of collaboration tried to make an effort to do a fair share of the visibility uh, of the people participating, for example, in the conferences. But uh, sometimes it's more a problem for us, as many of you mentioned, that uh, we are given the possibility to give a talk or represent the collaboration, but we don't just have the money uh, to do that. So um, I think it's, a, it's an effort from, from both sides, and from the management of the collaboration, of course, and from us to, to have the, the funding to, to be able to move on and profit from this uh, visibility. Uh, so, yes, this was my my last uh, comment so uh, let's close the session for today thank you uh, uh, martin thank you all the speakers and uh, we see each other uh, tomorrow for the, next, the last uh, session of this symposium so thank you everybody and now with Rocher, you want to say something no just thank no. thanks everybody again and see you tomorrow thank you for the okay. talk Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. bye thank you.
Bye-bye. Thank you, Martin. That was very nice. That was a Thank lot of work much. for you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's surprising how much time it takes to... Uh... <laughs> But the, the, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Doug. For, uh, yeah. You know, this thing about giving talks that you mentioned, uh, I, I'm sure all, the, all in the experiments, they always have a, uh, um, uh, how do you call it, speakers committee or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and they make sure, at least in the experiment I'm working, the cartridge survey, they make sure that the uh, early career scientists can uh, get to give this talk to get more visibility. Yeah, absolutely. Also, in, in CMS, there's a whole science behind it and a, a formula yes. on uh, who is more deserving. Yes. And uh, certainly, there is a, a high weight for young people to, yes. uh, to be able to do that. And there, but there are differences also between collaborations on how things are done exactly. 